So how many reviews your company has is higher ranking factor than your review score. But we know both of those play a huge factor. You know, even us, when we're looking to shop anything on Amazon, we're looking to see how many reviews they have. People really use that as like the new word of mouth. It's going to help the business get more leads and get more business, which is in turn more profitable to the company because you get to stay busy. That's just really where it's a great blend of making sure that you can get that business. They find you first and you do close that business because they have that trust and belief because you have the authority right then and there. Welcome to the Waste No Day podcast, a podcast specifically for and about the home services industry as it relates to plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and electrical. More than a podcast, Waste No Day is a credo, a determination, a mindset. It is a never-ending discipline. It is a refuse-to-lose pursuit. It is a wake-up call every morning to waste no day. Now here's your hosts, Brian Burton and Nate Minnick. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Waste No Day podcast. Your host, Nate, and just Nate this time are hanging out with you. I'm sorry, Brian couldn't make it for this particular introduction, but I'm here to hold the fort down, and I want to wish you a happy new year. I hope you had a great weekend and are looking forward to what 2023 is going to bring your way. We here at the podcast have uh, thanked you for two years now of great listenership and comments and feedbacks and all the things that you've done for us. We're so thankful for that and really appreciate you continuing to do that for us. And we uh, hope to have a fantastic 2023 and continue to bring more great content for you. One of those is going to be Brittany Murphy today. We're inviting her on the show to talk about the concept of authority and influence. And for that, we're going to have a quote and it's going to be my turn to find the quote. This time, the quote comes from Napoleon Hill. Think twice before you speak because your words and influence will plant the seed of either success or failure in the mind of another. The quote there is important because what we're talking about today is influence and authority. And really, when we are talking about authority, we are talking about influence because it's the ability to have the authority, the take care of business mentality, the I got this, the I'm the guy, I'm going to handle this and see it through from start to finish, that type of authority to bring confidence and trust into the relationship. And it's so important to do that in both the home as well as the marketplace. And that's what makes our guest uh, a really interesting topic and focus of conversation for today. Brittany is a marketing expert, and she understands what the authority in the home and what the authority online does to impact each other. And there is neither one of those that outweighs the other, because what we do in the home directly influences the authority that we start gaining online and the authority that we gain online directly influences how many homes we get to do it in uh, from a marketing and jobs perspective. That's right. We're going to be talking about how influence in terms of getting those five star reviews drives additional calls to your business and then what you need to do in the home to drive those five star reviews back onto the internet. That type of cycle is unfortunately, or fortunately, depending how you look at it, how business works today. And so much of us, so much of our attention is focused on the concept of reviews and five stars and and 10 out of 10s and all these things that we have basically been ingrained to. It's part of our nature. It's what we do when we go to shop. It's what we do when we go to review. It's what we do when we go to search for things, whether it's services or restaurants, you name it. It is all primarily review-based, and the home services industry is no different. Whenever trouble comes in a homeowner's life, they're always looking for somebody to basically take ownership of the fix. That's where we step in. We step in coming at it from the plumbing angle or the heating, air air conditioning, or electrical, or whatever industry you are an expert in. You are the one providing the fix. And when somebody is in need, they want confidence in who you are and in the job that you're going to do. And the moment that that confidence starts to wane, the moment where the authority starts to become questionable, the moment when, when the trust starts to be broken is the moment that you're in trouble and you know that things are going to start going downhill. That's why having authority in the home is so important because it, it communicates to the homeowner that we've got this. We're going to handle this for you. And in today's age, you only typically get in the home if you have the authority online first. 
That authority is so many times uh, what used to be this word of mouth marketing, which of course still exists in many ways. And people are still sharing with their neighbors, their experiences and all that. But in so many more ways, it has become a digital version of that where people are sharing their experiences with that five-star review or that one-star review. And, and that impacts so many people. Think about the last time that you went to make an online purchase on Amazon or, or eBay or any, any uh, product site, right? Any e-commerce site. Did you look at the reviews? Did you look at the ratings? Did you look at the comments? I, I, I feel very confident in saying that most of us do that on a regular basis. So much so that we've gotten to the place of, uh, you know, perhaps being overly confident in what we're reading or, or only reading the top reviews. Or maybe some of you are those deep dive and out analysis that want to go into the one stars and the two stars and get the full picture. What we do online and the authority that we gain with those reviews is how Google rates and ranks so many websites and so many search results. And that's why that impact in terms of how you're being found online and what you're doing in the home creates this, this vicious cycle of what you do in the home reflects into the, the reviews online and the reviews online affect how many people invite you into their home. That's why this is such an important topic today and one that I hope as you uh, enter into the new year here, that whether you're in the field or you're behind the desk or running your own company, whatever you're doing, you're putting some intentional focus on gaining authority and reviews both online as well as in the home. That pursuit will not be in vain because it is, it is through that that the reputation of a company and the reputation of the individuals that make up the company are really presented in the public square. Right. In, in fact, in our case, you know, we often have many of our clients writing down the names of their technicians in the reviews, which creates this this really unique and um, personal experience for a new person who's searching for service that they see that, you know, uh, Jimmy was listed in here and Todd was listed in here. And wow, I've seen I've seen Frank's name come up a number of times. I bet he's a really good tech. And those are the types of relationships and trust efforts that make people feel confident about choosing you, whether it's for the first time or whether it's for the 40th time, right? That, that type of authority that I know that Todd is going to take care of me because the reviews told me, or I know that Todd's going to take care of me because I've had him out here before. I'm going to write a review about Todd and we just go into this cycle. Now, that same level of authority, that same level of influence, just like the quote that Napoleon Hill was talking about can go the other direction. The one-star reviews, the two-star reviews that tear your company down, that tear your people down, those have the opposite effect, right? They're, they're driving away the authority or perhaps they're making you authority in the wrong direction. And it's so important to be responding to those, to be creating dialogue in the public eye so that they can see that even in the case when you did perhaps have a mistake or a misunderstanding or something just didn't go the way that we expected it, that you were there to one, identify that Hey, we're paying attention. We saw this review uh, and we addressed the problem. And two, that you addressed it to the satisfaction of the person who wrote the review. In, in my case, this is, this is one of my jobs. So I basically monitor our online reputation and I'm the one who follows up on all these reviews uh, in, in text form or whatever they're coming in, and whether it's on social media or on Google, I'm the one writing the responses. And that's, that can be a tricky thing, right? Because emotions want to play into it. And in and, and speaking about authority, there is a negative side of authority where you become an authoritarian, right? You start playing the heavy hand and you start laying down, you know, the, the I gotchas and, and all this like, uh, you know, really witty stuff that makes you feel good in the moment. But from the outside looking in, people see those responses from a company and they're deterred. They're turned away. Like, wow, that, that company kind of seems like a jerk, right? Because you need to understand that the people reading these responses are other homeowners and other people who are attempting to make a decision. They're attempting to decide whether to invite you into their home for their problem. And when they see an emotional response that might make you feel good as the, as the owner of the business or the technician in the field, might make you feel like, yeah, I showed them. They're not reading it that way. They're reading it like, I don't want to have this experience happen to me and then have this company try to shove it back on my, my lap, right? I'll move on. So authority with these reviews and authority with your customer service is all tandem. It, it ties together. 
right? And so often when we get a negative review, you know, I ask the service manager or the technician, like what happened here? We'll try to work out and identify through the notes and through conversation what was going on. Oftentimes we'll call the person and, and try to express to them. And if we can't get a hold of them, or unfortunately some of these reviews come in as like anonymous and you're not exactly sure what you're even responding to, we still try to make a comprehensive and yet fairly neutral response. We don't want to come off as as like a know-it-all. We don't want to come off as, uh, you know, uh, in-your-face type thing. Um, even as good as that may feel, it, it it's really not going to be to much benefit. However, the response every single time that a negative review comes in is for great benefit, right? Nobody believes that a company is going to be perfect, but we all believe that a company should stand behind whatever mistakes or whatever problems occur, right? That is part of the authority. That is part of the confidence. That is part of the trust that we believe in when we do business with somebody. We believe that if a product goes bad or a service goes bad or it doesn't work up to expectations, that they're going to take care of us. And even in the times that they don't, you know, it, originally they take care of us on the back end. And so the response to the online reviews, the response to all the chatter on the internet and all that stuff is important because you're getting in there and showing the rest of the people, the rest of the people that you are here as a company paying attention and taking care even when stuff doesn't go according to plan. Those are the concepts that we're going to be talking about with Brittany Murphy today. She is joining us uh, to talk about authority in the home as well as on the market place. And this is going to be a great conversation with some really uh, simple and yet effective tools to integrate into your day-to-day, -day, whether you're a business owner or a technician in the field. And with that, we are going to invite Brittany Murphy into your passenger seat. Our guest today is Brittany Murphy. For almost a decade, Brittany has created over 300 online marketing strategies for clients all across the United States. As a partner at One Thing Marketing, Brittany focuses on helping home service business owners get their phones to ring with new leads. Growing up in the trades herself, her team has niched into specializing for trade and home service businesses. Since 2011, they have been perfecting their proven process and strategies for optimizing clients' websites and Google rankings. Through her strategies and background in blue collar and her experienced team, Brittany has helped local businesses increase their revenue by at least 30% every year. With that, welcome to the show, Brittany. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Thanks for, uh, excuse me, thanks for coming on. It's a great so. way to start, Brian. <laughs> Speaking of branding yourself, uh, Brittany, right. we have a lot of work to do here. I'm out. This was a great episode. Thanks, Brittany. I'm out of here. See you guys later. You're welcome. Glad my job is done. Yes. Oh, we're keeping that, buddy. Oh, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on, Brittany. Um, you, you're you with One Thing Marketing, correct? That is correct. Tell us about One Thing Marketing. Well, um, I'm sorry to let you know, but we actually do more than one thing. So I am beginning this with a lie. Um, our name does not match what uh, we do. Hang on. Time out. Time out. This is an episode about branding yourself well. And, and we, we've already started on the wrong foot. I'm, I'm concerned. <laughs> well, don't, don't be concerned. Maybe it's something where, in a sense, when you understand the message behind it, really we're kind of, in a sense, a marketing agency honed in on trades and home service businesses. So while you focus on your one thing, which may be making a homeowner happy, it may be you know making sure that you fix things and people are warm or covered or whatever they need to be, while we focus on your marketing. So therefore, you can kind of just focus on keeping your clients happy, and we focus on getting more clients for you through mainly digital marketing methods, such as your website, search engine optimization, your Google rankings, Google ads, and kind of all the fun things here and in between of that. All right, Brittany, let's cut to the chase here. We have a lot of technicians, plumbers, and electricians who are frontline people in the field. Why do they care about what you do? Well, luckily, I'm kind of assuming most of your listeners are tech for their company. So I'm actually going to be talking mainly to those guys. So don't worry, I will be on topic with that. But really, the reason I want to talk about this is, you know, mainly I'm hearing most trades and technicians are commission based. Is that true? I think there's a healthy mix in the market. But I believe a lot of our listeners would align with commissions. Yes. Yeah. 
Well, and honestly, whether you're either side of it, if you are commission-based, if you're not commission-based, really the, the main things I'm talking about is making sure that your company that you're working for is staying as busy and as profitable as possible. So the reason this is important for you is because if you're busy, you're obviously making money, you're in your truck. Uh, if you're commission-based, so if you're the sales side of the team, then you know, you're doing really well with new installs and different things of that nature. So as much as you might not think it's your job to do your company's marketing, if you want to make money and if you want to be a successful person in this business, it's really only going to come to your benefit. Um, and one thing I was telling you know both of you guys is, is some of the things I say today, like they're not under your control and some of these things might not be. I'm going to talk about the things that are most under your control versus not. But if it's not something under your control, like go ahead and forward this to someone in your office because they need to hear this because basically you're trying to find people to support you on your mission and be successful and profitable. And these guys just kind of need to help have your back and do those things because if you're doing good service work, someone needs to be helping make sure that you continue to do that. So really I'm just coming here to make sure that if you own a business or you work for a business, you're busy and you're paid well. Um, we desperately need trades and I, most companies I work with are desperate for employees. So those who do work for these places make great money because they can stay busy. And even if this is something, again, kind of answering your question a long winded way is nothing in life is guaranteed at all. And, you know, unfortunately, even if you're working for a company very successful now, very busy, that does not mean that you might always get on the right foot with them moving forward. So if you have to start over, and rebrand yourself with a new company, with a new market, maybe with even a new area if you moved. These are all things that are going to help you implement marketing yourself better, getting back to where you need to be, and just really kind of making sure you can make the biggest thing for your buck in, in the trades world and in the technician world. So how did I do answering that question? <laughs> awesome. Well, she said the two things she's here for are to make sure that you, whether you own a business or work for a business, are busy and paid well. And we get a lot of marketing companies who ask to come on and do an episode, which we are fully aware that for, for the most part, it's uh, it's a branding thing for the marketing company. So uh, as of yet, we have not, I don't think we've accepted one yet, right? I had a short conversation with Brittany the other day and um, you kind of started with that. And I'm like, well, that that is, or some version of that. And I'm like, well, that's exactly what this podcast exists to do. If number one, oh. to, to help the trades get more efficient, make more money, certainly uh, the technicians in the trade. Number two, help owners and managers progress as well. And then number three is to make the trades um, more appealing to the next generation. And you, you nailed that first two in, in the first minute of our conversation. So I was like, I just texted Nate while we were talking. This is a done deal. <laughs> She's coming out. <laughs> And I thought it was all because you thought I was actually the famous actress still. So I'm glad to know it was actually off my merit and not my just my name. Yeah, I had I'd started by googling. I'm like, I'm on, I'm talking to Brittany. I was like, oh, she passed away a few years ago. So this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then you said that, and I was like, okay, I'm back in. Exactly. Well, uh, you hit the nail on the head there, Brittany. There is a massive trade gap, and we are always looking for technicians and people to join into the trades. But what about you? What's your background and how did you get into what you're doing? Yeah, great question. So it's been almost 10 years now that I have been at this position really honing in. And I mainly talk to, you know, business owners. So sometimes it is the technicians that know of me, hear of me, and they send me straight to their boss and I kind of talk with them and help them create a strategy for their individual business, whatever industry they're in, whatever city they're in. Um, I really kind of help and hone in with that. But Funny enough, even prior to my 10 years, I grew up um, in the trades, in a trades family. Uh, let me correct myself. So I did not work in it, but my dad was a pipe fitter for a local sprinkler company for almost 30 years. So when I grew up, we really kind of understood the concept of if my dad wasn't home, we were eating well <laughs> because he was busy out on jobs and he was being paid for the hours he was out working and making overtime and, and life was great. Unfortunately, the times got tough and his company was not getting any bids, uh, any government bids, any con uh, commercial bids or residential bids for any type of sprinkler or plumbing issues. Well, we weren't eating well, you know, and times got tight. And my dad was a tech, so he was not a business owner of this. And so even though I'm talking to business owners, it's coming to that aspect of I know what you want to do as a family business. You want to succeed, but also your employees and you probably want them to do well. Also, and, you know, if the majority of your listeners are those guys, then we know 
we want to do well ourselves and make sure our kids are eating well and we're building a successful future for ourselves. So it has been kind of a beautiful collision of over the past couple of years, we've niched down, niched down and niched down. And then guess what? We niched down one more time. And now we are purely only trying to market ourselves to anyone in the trade businesses as far as marketing to kind of help those guys because we have the background to understand the importance of it, the seasonality, the changes, you know, the things between installations, new jobs, repair jobs, all that fun jazz. So that way our guys can just tell us what their goals are. And because we understand their industry enough, we can get all of their marketing done for them because (laughs) the joke is, you know, the shoe cobbler's kid, he does not get a pair of shoes, right? So we want to make sure that these guys, although they can stay busy, they're going to continue to grow themselves and especially local family businesses. That's what I love, um, honestly, just because that's always what my family worked for. Um, so we want to hone in and help those guys as much as possible. And so just my background in that's really created my passion for it. And I think Brian was surprised that I knew about maintenance agreements and different things as far as in the HVAC world. So that knowledge just makes it even more fun because again, um, and so I really feel like most people in the trades are people just like me that, you know, we, we want this to be fun and easy, um, but we got to get serious and, and that's exactly how we operate as well. Um, so it's been a very beautiful blend of all those worlds over the last 30 plus years. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the fact that uh, you have some heritage there. And I think that's it. That's critical in understanding how to market because uh, the trades isn't your average, you know, your, your average uh, business to uh, consumer type style. I mean, we're in the home. That's that's what makes us very unique. You know, we're not a retail outlet. We don't have a place for people to come. Uh, we're going to their house and we're bringing our shop, our product, our store with us into the house. And so that makes, it makes a lot of difference in terms of how we position ourselves and also how we are perceived in the market. So why don't we jump into it and start getting into the nitty gritty of why, um, you know, branding yourself or creating a, a perception of who you are is so critical. And let's start on a technician level because we do have a lot of listeners who operate on the front lines <clears throat> And we are super proud of them and what they are doing because it is a hard, hard job to be doing day in and day out, walking up to strangers' houses, knocking on the door and getting those butterflies in the stomach as to whether and who is going to open that door. And so what are some of your best takes on why it's even important to consider the concept of paying attention to who you are and how you're being perceived by the person behind the home door? Yeah, and for me... a lot of my answer will kind of go around a similar word I'm going to mention, and that's going to be the word authority. There are many ways that we can create authority in our industry. One of them is how you brand yourself, how you come across the image you have. All those things are basically the visual factors we put together so quickly to completely imagine who someone is. So for example, this is luckily a videotape podcast because you might notice I have very bright, bright blonde hair. And some people take that as a sign of, mental incognizance, which is not, it's just a joke. There's always blonde jokes. So I have to brand myself in a way that makes me make sure that I be any type of stereotype that might be out in my field. So relaying this back to even more the trades, sometimes people are going to think because you're in a reactive industry. And when I mean reactive, I mean the majority of your clients are calling because they have to meaning a problem happened, they need it fixed, they need a repair, they need to install, they need something fixed, and they're usually not as proactive. Although, you know, with different industries, you know, take out the caveat, but I'm going to assume that most of these are more emergency services or reactive client base that you have. And so when you're coming into those positions, people are going to assume that, you know, they're going to be taken advantage of, you know, they're going to be swindled, Um, you're going to come in and really not do a great job, your attention to detail is going to be low, there's a lot of stigmatism that go with this just because most homeowners don't know how to fix anything. Uh, am I right? <laughs> and, well, there's, there's plenty who try, but yes, uh, yes. <laughs> it's a common and, and misconception. Usually they, and usually they make a bigger mess up for some of our technicians to have to come and clean. So let's just, again, with everything with grain of salt, majority of the clients don't know what they're doing and they're very nervous because they might feel they're going to get taken advantage of. And I myself for the longest time was a single female homeowner. So when I opened up the door to someone coming to my home, I also had a fear. And my fear was, who is this person coming to my home? You know, so the technician and the client, you have to realize you're both going against the same fear. So what helps the client have less fear and you in the meantime is just really building that authority and making sure that they understand that 
who they call, you know, not just the business, which is why I said this is important for you and your business you work for, that name's got to be trusted. And secondly, there's ways you can make sure your name actually stands out within a company. So therefore, you have more authority as well when you walk into that door as a good representative and not just a, a nobody that showed up that, you know, threw a logo on their truck because they just needed someone in, in the business to begin with. Um, so that's kind of what, just one thing to kind of answer that question in the beginning. Is that kind of majority where you're going to? Yeah, I think that's a, that's an interesting observation. So in your personal life, you've had to overcome the fact that, you know, you're blonde and there's certain perceptions about that. And I, I think it's an interesting parallel how uh, people people always have, you know, the first impression uh, mindset, right? And so we, we teach, you know, here in our office, we teach that generally first impressions are made within three to five seconds. And so the homeowner has made their impression of you as a technician walking up to their door because they were probably looking out the window. They've made their first impression of you before you've ever spoke to them, before you've ever seen them, before you've ever interacted with them, and certainly before you even had a chance to position yourself. And that's why, you know, branding yourself, uh, taking care of yourself, being aware of the stereotypes or the perceptions that people have about you, either in how you're dressed or how you parked or how your van looks or, or any of the above is so critical to success inside the home. We talk about don't set up hurdles on the outside of the home that you have to unnecessarily jump over when it's already so hard just to walk up to the house, like brand yourself well. Make sure your shirt's tucked in. Make sure your hair is combed. Make sure you smell good. Make sure your van looks good. Because when you walk up to that door, that person has most likely already judged you. And the last thing you want to do is confirmation bias yourself into a negative opinion. Exactly. And, and every moment of your interaction is an interview. There is a point where the client is going to assume you might mess up and they're going to get a weird feeling and they're going to change their feeling about you. And most likely the sale, the close is not going to happen kind of going down that. And, Really, that's what leads into kind of my first. I have I have three big points for you guys oh, today. I love it. I this, love points. Yeah, Let's go. It, exactly. And this one really kind of hones the first one I was talking about. So when it kind of comes to that authority, like you said, the way you dress, the way you act, the way you park your car, all of these things kind of come into it. But something that happens before you even arrive to their address is every client is always going to go to Google and they're always going to look at your reviews. So reviews is actually the first thing I, I really wanted to kind of dive in deep about because some businesses I work with, they have different things and incentives to get their text to get more reviews. And, and sometimes they're paid more for each of those. And if it's been something you've absolutely hated as a tech asking every single time, trust me, I 100% get that. I have to ask my clients for it. And I would rather sometimes reshingle my entire roof than do it because it is sometimes an embarrassing thing because you felt like you've bent over backwards. You think you've done the best job and you're hoping the person's seen the effort you've put back into it. But again, because of your efforts previously with other homeowners, your coworkers, their efforts previously, all these are actually going to lead into all those reviews and where they're going to get that first impression of the business which will bleed into you. And so that's kind of where I'm saying, even if you don't have a personal brand just yet, if you started with a new company, one thing I love is if my companies who actually do these incentives is they will basically, you know, they'll try to track it via who closed with what technician while they were there to fix it. But the techs will actually ask, hey, if I did a good job for you, will you mention my name in the review? So, so my company will know that I serviced you. Do you guys see an issue with that as far as if you if someone asked you that question, would you feel weird about it in any way? Not at all. In fact, if you, I'm just looking up our reviews right now. Um, if you would spend time looking over our reviews here, many of them have uh, the technician's name listed in the review. And it's, it's something that we're proud of and we promote because we want our clients to be tied to Charlie. We want them to be tied to Frank and, and Tom and, and, and all these people, because there's a lot more loyalty to a person than there is to a company. And of course, that's incumbent upon us treating our employees well, so they stick with our company. But we believe mm -hmm. that we do that. And in doing that, we create this, this uh, you know, very personal experience where many of the, review, the reviews talk about how, you know, Tommy was great. He was amazing. He communicated so well with me. You know, and, and Charlie, he was fantastic. He fed my dog. He loved, he loved uh, my kids and it, it was great. And I just felt so welcomed and so appreciated by the way that, that uh, Brad took care of me. And, 
and and that's great. I, I find a lot of uh, a lot of value to that, and I feel people are far more willing in terms of providing you with that review. They're far more willing to do that at the request of a human being than they are at the request of some big you know perceived corporation company or whatever. Does that make sense? It does, and that's actually the psychological effect behind it. So anybody who already does ask for them, if you ask in person you are more likely if there is a follow-up system afterwards to get that review that that client's more likely to leave it because they they had the physical verbal obligation come out of their mouth they're more likely to want to uphold that later on when they kind of get asked again and and yeah and really i kind of skipped over one of the biggest reasons i'm telling you to get reviews can either of you guys guess about this well from a marketing perspective google surely uses uh, review numbers to position you higher 100%. Good job. I will mail you all a box of chocolates after this for doing your homework. Thank you. Dark chocolate for me, please. Okay. Definitely. Nate's the only one who did his homework. Now we're going to get dark chocolates. (laughs) (laughs) I'll send some some mint Andes in there too, but exactly. That is 100% the answer. It's ranking higher on Google. So how many reviews your company has is higher ranking factor than your review score But we know both of those play a huge factor. You know, even us, when we're looking to shop anything on Amazon, we're looking to see how many reviews they have. You know, we're considering a percentage of them are fake, you know, but how bad does all of the, how many ones are there considering, you know, not all of these might be true when it comes to those type of products. But people really use that as like the new word of mouth. And especially, again, going back to that whole, you're in a more reactive industry. So people are having to do their research, sometimes pretty quickly, depending on what environment they're coming to you for. And if so, you know, they're really going to utilize that. So it's going to help the business get more leads and get more business, which is in turn more profitable for the company because you get to stay busy. But it's also a great thing because, like you said, if you can get that client to tag and create that relationship with that tech, they're going to want to call that company because they want to get back with that tech. And they're and really anyone who else to go sees those reviews and they say, OK, you're right. So I was told Brad's coming at 10 a.m. to check out my uh, furnace because it's not working. And I go to the team page, I see Brad, and then also I go to their Google reviews, and I can see Brad mentioned a few times and people raving about him. I'm going to be way more relaxed and excited about this person coming in because I can see maybe they've been there for a bit. So, again, it's not a brand new person I'm getting sent because that's all of our fear, you know, that we're getting a brand new person on the job. You know, we've all gone to Walmart, Target lately, and you ask a question, the person says, I just started. You might not want to ask me. And I appreciate those people, but, you know, what we're trying to do is avoid any of those things that might be negative things. So when you get out of your car and you walk up to their door, you're already setting them up for success and yourself up for success because they already have maybe an idea of who you are, or at the very least, they have a good idea of the company you work for and the expectations and standards that that company holds. And therefore they're going to assume you hold those as well because you work for them. And that's just really where it's a great blend of making sure that you can get that business they find you first and you do close that business because they have that trust and belief because you have the authority right then and there. Yeah. We talk about reviews in terms of uh, two methods uh, of importance to our, our employees, our coworkers. And uh, one of them is, Hey, listen guys, the more reviews we get, the more calls you get. So that's a win, win for everybody, right? So ask for the review, make sure you do a good job, get a, a good quality review and get a review in general, right? And then the second thing that we talk about them is that these are recruiting. These are recruiting ads, what you're doing here, because many people will look up the reviews of a company before they apply or certainly before they take the job. And every time that they see, you know, thousands of homeowners saying like, this is amazing, this was amazing, this is amazing. And a 4.5 or a five star rating, they're like, I I feel confident pursuing this as a job. And that's, there's really those two things are so critical to Uh, the overall atmosphere that a business is bringing both to the marketplace for consumers as well as the marketplace for future employees. Exactly. And, and that's kind of why I mentioned if this is something you feel like you can't control because your company doesn't see this value in it yet forward them this podcast, because some of the things they could easily include to get more reviews and it would be a win-win for both industries is, you know, not that this is 1% legal. So again, hopefully Google's not listening to me this second, but, you can offer incentives for a review. And I tell my guys, hey, if it's just a repair job, is a brand new client, you know, they're happy, their furnace is fixed, you know, it's on, it's running, it's heating the house. And you say, hey, I'm about to go write up your ticket. 
um, if you if you think that I've done a good job for you today, would you mind, and you could have like a QR code or something they could scan, simply to get them there, but say, hey, if, would you mind leaving a review? If so, if you leave one while I'm writing this up in the truck for it, like I'll go ahead and take $10 off this receipt for you. And again, I know this is not completely legal by all standards of Google, but you can, people do this. This is a way that they get people to incentivize to get to a certain number of reviews because you don't have to do this forever, but you need to look at your competitors. You know, even as a tech, if you are 100 to 200 reviews behind your local competitor, holy crap, guys, like, you know, you need to get your company up to that. So they need to help incentivize you with being able to give coupons off. Or are they even willing to do company contests? So that way, even if you're the one that wins it every month, well, good for you. You should get money out of it. But also it's going to help make your coworkers do the same thing because, again, all those reviews are going to add up to help your process as well close these guys and make sure that that's working for you twofold. So uh, definitely an important piece of being the authority in terms of being the one that people search for, the one that Google is treating as the authority, the one that is being perceived as the authority by the consumer when they're doing the search, and then ideally carrying that through as the authority in the home. Great first point there, Brittany. Let's move on to number two. What's another piece of authority or importance about how we are framing ourselves? Yes. Well, this is also going to start before your meeting starts with that client and potentially during and after. And it's actually just, it's really giving your company even more stuff to help them rank online, but also to help you close a client. So one thing I see a lot of different uh, trades industries not do too well on is they really don't have any like FAQs on their website. And I'll be honest, as someone in sales also, there are always, the most frequently asked questions I always get. And I know sometimes I feel like people will say, hey, I read over your website, and they'll ask me a question that I, I know is on there. It might even be on our FAQ section. You know, maybe they might be testing me or different things like this, but clients trust you when your answers match the website. And also, they trust you more when you're talking anything about the process of repairing something or replacing something, anything in which it's getting to the stickiness of the buying process. So that might be when you get to the price. That might be when you get to saying how long it's going to take to order cabinets to come in. You know, if you're a remodeling company, any of these things that kind of add up to it, if you actually have any of that information and this could be on a pamphlet as well, something that's pre-written on your website would be great because people are going there. Again, they're typing into Google, they're finding that HVAC company, they're looking at reviews, they're looking at your website and they're calling two or three guys to get them as quick as possible. At least if your weather's, you know, last week it was 80s here in Louisville, Kentucky, and this week it is 20. <laughs> so I know my HVAC guys are horrendously busy this week because we dropped 60 degrees in the matter of a week and a half. These people, when they're in reactive industries, they're going to do some, some research, not maybe over the moon, but that's even where when you're in the house and you're asking, hey, okay, so let's look at your options for different HVAC units to replace your, your old system with, you know, you might be explaining the SEER levels to them and they don't understand at all what that is. Well, wouldn't it be beautiful if you had something visually with you, which I hope most do, but secondly, wouldn't this be something great where they could have already maybe seen it on the website? So that way when you bring it up, they're already like, oh, yeah, we, we understand that we might get a better high efficiency rate with a higher SEER level. We understand there's more expense with that. You know, what would you suggest? Wow. What power would you have for a client to actually have a little bit of knowledge beforehand? So when you're telling them this, they're not just in like shock and awe and disbelief. They actually have a little bit of a background knowledge, understand what the premise of what you're trying to explain to them is. So again, that kind of helps bring them more, more comfort in that sense. And I would assume I'm you know, pricing their process, warranties or financing. Is there anything like that you guys think of that are usually like the, the biggest concerns and hurdles to get over when you're talking to a new client? Yeah. I mean, I think there's a wide variety of those. I, I like the idea as a, as a general rule of thumb of creating some awareness to some of the common questions consumers have. And we do frequently field those questions, even on our call taking team uh, where, you know, a lot of the same questions are coming up. Uh, but yeah, of course, you know, price is definitely a big one. How long, how, how, uh, price, uh, yeah. How long, how long till we can get it installed? How long will the job take? Uh, as well as like, you know, what, what implications would happen? Uh, but we're also in a, a, such a diverse industry. Like there's, you know, a, a million things that can go wrong or go right. And there's a, a hundred products that 
insert themselves into all those different equations. And so, I mean, that FAQ might end up being pretty long. How would we focus that down to the main things that a consumer would actually care about? The easiest trick I say is if you're, if your company has an internal office staff or just, you know, someone who mans the phones, that's probably the best person to create this relationship with, because this could be their job potentially. And I know everybody hates getting more homework, but it would benefit even them. One of the things I say to do is, have a notepad with you every time you get asked a question that's pretty general and basic. You know, I mean, if it's about a particular specific unit, do not write those down. Very broad, general questions you might get. Write those down. When you get asked it again on the next sales call or the next new prospect phone call, just put a little tally next to it. After like a week or so, I mean, and that might even be too long, (laughs) pretty quickly, you'll know exactly what are the main questions people are asking me. And the thing you could see on your side as well is, what are the best answers I'm giving? And so why I'm trying to say you should create this relationship with your in-house team to help you do these things and you know, whoever is the office manager or secretary is you can actually give them this information. They can add it to the website, but they could actually add it in the sales language that you use. And so actually, Brian, I already, I already told you this. I, I listened to the Chris Foss episode y'all did, uh, episode 100. It was fantastic. Awesome. Appreciate that. I, I was actually fangirling when I was listening to it, but one thing I you wanted to hone in. Oh, I, fangirling. I oh, you're a big fangirling because you're a huge waste. No day fan. And, uh, you heard of this guy, that Chris was Foss. Obviously, obviously it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was, I was, really surprised. <laughs> I mean, I hadn't heard of Chris Foss before, but yeah, I was really excited. <laughs> well, okay. What's the name well of that done. book again? Well done. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, one thing he said was, you know, when, when asked to lower your price, you're basically going to say no, like you're not going to negotiate. And that's kind of the reason I'm kind of saying this as well. Like if you actually have this and other information on your website to refer back to, it can kind of help you hold your ground and give you more authority. So for example, his example was you take things out of it, you know, so it's not you're giving your exact same thing and lowering your value of it. You're taking something of equal or lesser value out because this is authority. This is exactly what it costs is exactly what I'm paying for it. And, you know, so if you can have that, it's just a backdrop where people can already kind of see, okay, yeah, all right, a brand new HVAC unit's not going to cost me less than $1,000 unless it's used. You know, like some people don't even know that HVAC units are thousands of dollars. Some unfortunately do like myself in 2020. I had to purchase every new everything, but some people don't. So like even just them coming in understanding what's a range to budget for. Okay, wow, I didn't know they were so expensive. What's your financing options? You know, something like that. They might be too nervous to maybe ask in the moment. So they have this information, know you already offer it. Now when you're in their home, you mention it. They're like, okay, I don't have to ask this. They already brought it up. But also, Chris mentioned, and it's something that I love, using your late night DJ voice. Um, one of the best things as far as like a, a good acronym to kind of remember, you know, like if you use that late night DJ voice and you mirror all the issues and feelings of that potential, what they're going through, that can help your sales case by basically making them feel heard and getting right to their issues or concerns. So why I said, what are your answers to these FAQs matter? Because how you can see what you say sells a homeowner, why are you not sharing that? So therefore, your website could help you share more. Again, these are all answers people might be looking at the website before they even have that introduction to you. And that could be what convert them. You know, this is all the stuff that's going to put into place. So when you give your game and sales pitch, they're saying, okay, this is kind of what I expected. They're not throwing an extra zero on something that I already saw from their website. You know, they're not the cheapest in town, but they're the best quality. All those things kind of go through with it. And that's kind of where I love is, you know, Chris mentioned like right when you walk in the door, you know, it's kind of saying something like, I know I'm the last person you wanted to see today. You know, you're hoping this isn't going to take forever, you know, and you want someone that can do it right the first time, you know, and I'm going to help answer all those questions for you today. Like little things like that. That's exactly how you're going to pitch it. But also even making sure your website and your marketing materials and everything you hand to a client that they read about you before, during, and after your visit speaks like that. So kind of we joke before this started, I I kind of cuss like a sailor as well, and I try to hone it in some. But to be honest, most of my companies are, are in the trades. They're in the home services, and they are in the shop. And sometimes they let all these cuss words slip out as well, and they don't want someone who's uptight to freak out and not know how to handle them. Well, I just know to, well, that's half me as well. So like, let's just get to the point. You're right. Like, I don't care really what, care what you say. I can hear you. I understand your concerns. And because I match how you feel, 
you feel that I can take this off your plate and get it done for you with me and my team and, and do everything marketing for you can. So it's, that's kind of how those things like really put things together as well. And I mean, even in your closing meeting, I've seen websites where like they don't have financing or warranty applications like online or easy to get to at all. So you might have these printed out, you know, and that's fine. If you're literally writing it for them or you have it on your iPad, great. That is perfect. But if you're not going to do it for them, paperwork can feel daunting to a client and you don't know who's going to walk in before or after you. That's going to make that process for them so simple that it's going to make their life even easier. So it's kind of where I'm telling you, like, make sure your company is helping you and putting some of these processes into place so you can just do your job and get it done and do it quickly and make that client so happy because it seemed very easy and breezy for something that they know they're going to have to lose money on and they didn't want to do in the first place but they needed to because something broke and something had to get fixed with it. Um, so really that's something that's going to help you. But I'll be honest, kind of the reason I told you this is adding cons to the website helps Google ranking, like Google ranking to my guys is the ultimate goal because if you're ranking high, you can be busy, which equals more commission, more sales, more profit, you know, and everybody wants to grow. And this is something that can very much help you grow more at like a scale and a manageable pace, just because, getting employees right now in this day and time isn't always the easiest. So these are ways that you can kind of grow with it. And there, there's tons of more things I could kind of tell you about how to show up on Google and, and grow your trade business. But, you know, that might not be anything you can control for your business. And honestly, you know, that probably could be just a whole other podcast episode I could explain that on. So I'll save the rest for now. Um, I also even have an ebook that we can share at the end, if that makes sense to for you guys to download and send to your uh, owners and managers to tell them all the stuff they need to be doing to help you because these are really just all things that if you had these tools and resources, it makes a homeowner so much more comfortable and really ready to buy with you because we all have to understand they're talking to more than one company, most likely. So we have to make sure we're at whatever comp- competitive advantage we can have in the game. Yeah, we'd sure love to know more about that, uh, Brittany, and we can hit that at the end. I think what you're talking about there is primarily consistency, right? We need consistent messaging from our website to our marketing materials, to our technicians in the home, to our phone and call takers, to everything throughout the company. And what consistency does is it builds authority and authority leads to trust, right? And that's the only way that business is accomplished. The more consistent we are, the more effective we are at building trust with the client because we're creating that experience that they can rely upon, even if it's their first time, what we promised on the phone was what happened in the field was what happened, you know, when the call was over and all those things are so critical to the success, not only of that particular call, but to the reputation that we are building for future calls that we have yet to get. Exactly. And even consistency, yes, is 100% the correct word, but even just lowering that to communication is important. So even when we had COVID, I was, we were changing a lot of our trade service websites to say, You know, we're we're using special precautions right now during COVID-19, you know, call us if you have any questions about it. But what we're seeing is these clients, before you put down their website, they had people calling them saying, hey, I need you in my home to fix my furnace. But I'm 100% worried. This is, you know, March of 2020. We don't know what's happening, but it's 20, 30 degrees and I need to fix, you know, and they're getting scared to call places because even simple messaging and communication such as that wasn't available. So as a tech, if you know there's a concern, that your clients have. I mean, if you would have known that, you know, when world shut down, that should have been the first thing you told your office staff of, Hey, make someone add this to the website. So any future and current clients will know we're going to take extra precautions. So that way no one's afraid to call us because they're maybe afraid of being around anybody right now. while we don't know anything, you know? So yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, it's giving them the information to, again, just be comfortable and calm. And, and again, (laughs) some people are just lazy. So if you can give them those quick bullet points so quickly, like that just kind of helps lower the anxiety and they can just kind of let you take it from there. You never know what personality aspect someone's on until you start to ask them those questions. And then from there, you can just really create and hone in your message even better for them. Great stuff there, Brittany. So far, we've covered two pieces of authority, one being that we want to position ourselves from the beginning of a client's search to be the authority and hold that through into the home. And then secondly, we want to position ourselves as the authority in our consistent message and how we are positioning ourselves time and time again in front of the homeowner. How, what, what is the third thing or kind of the conclusion of your list there in terms of how we want to be attending to ourselves? 
Yeah, and for part three, all you have to do is uh, subscribe to my monthly subscription of nine ninety nine. No, I'm kidding, guys. <laughs> <laughs> No, now honestly, you know why like, we don't bring marketing people in here. <laughs> yeah, right. Always trying to make a buck off people, aren't they? Um, yeah. So really the third point as well is I, I'm, I've listened to a few episodes. I haven't seen anyone that's really mentioned this too much, but I know it's something that's very popular along any of our home service areas. But um, I know probably some people work for companies with maintenance programs, I would assume. Would you assume like a good average of your listeners? hopefully have a maintenance program within their company they're working for. Hopefully they, if they don't, they're missing out. Yeah. I, Cause I know it's a huge game changer for you know, like most HVAC companies or commercial mechanical businesses. I mean, any of those guys really <sighs> make sure your company markets this for you is really the thing I'm going to go after. A lot of my guys will get a uh, commission or different sales prospects for signing up new clients and renewing clients on maintenance programs, which is, phenomenal um and then some don't and so that's kind of where i'm going to have you as a technician just think for a hot second what is your company backing you up with to help sell and renew maintenance agreements with your clients and if it's something where you say uh that's a probably not much i have a pamphlet i walk into the home with and that's about it then shoot this podcast over to them because i got a little rant i'd love to get to them really quick um this is something that's very pivotal. So they need to have this info on their website and they need to be able to give you materials for people to hold. A lot of times, in with ma- especially with maintenance agreements, I mean, this is a pre-promise in the future of you going to come back and, and fix my unit, check it out, make sure it's doing its thing every summer and winter. I would like something tangible to probably get. So whether that is the brochure or the pamphlet afterwards, you give me. So you sign me up, you let me know exactly what I'm getting here's the expectations of what I can get. Like that's going to help me feel more comfortable and also get more excited to make sure that when springtime comes and you ask, you know, Hey, who would like their AC units, you know, like you're a part of our maintenance program. You know, we'd like to come around and check, please schedule with us. That would make me actually excited to check with you and have you come do it because I understand, Oh wow, here's all the benefits I'm getting out of it. And some companies I've heard don't care if people actually take them up on their, their maintenance plans because now it's free money and you didn't actually have to do any work with it, but you're missing out a huge opportunity of what if something was actually wrong or preventative maintenance you could do to actually have a bigger sell come out of that. And I know that why maintenance programs are so popular is because we can now have these people on a little retainer and we're the people they call. So when it does break, we're almost guaranteed that business and one, two, three, five years, you know, whatever that is kind of down the road with it. It's also like Uh, long-term strategy. Yeah. One, two, three, five years down the road. If you're building a brand and you're building a business, you, you have to think about, you know, sure you got everything you could out of, out of this home today, or I should say like everything they could upgrade with you, they did upgrade. So why bother, which is one that I've heard a lot in the industry. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you don't know two years from now, you don't even know six months from now what new products and services you're going to have to offer, but you can be sure you're going to. And yeah, the only the single way that the vast majority of our clients in HVAC, plumbing, and electrical are going to know about that is if, you, if our technicians show it to them. They're not playing commercials for most of this stuff. Uh, hopefully their friends talk about it, but not until they get one. So the maintenance of you know, club memberships or maintenance agreements or what have you for me are they're, they're pure gold for the simple fact that you get to touch base with these people once or twice a year, every year, any new product that you have, you get to show them. doesn't mean they're all going to want the product, but at least they know about it now, which is the only way they're going to find out about it. And then you have the opportunity to keep that relationship established once or twice a year so that when they have a breakdown or they find out about something they want to do with their HVAC plumbing or electrical system, guess who they're calling? It's a no brainer. You're not competing for that client. You're not paying marketing for that client. It's already established. They're paying you to, to, uh, have you on uh, top of mind. Exactly. And if you go back to that first point of making sure that you have your own brand, like your name is in these reviews, you have, as much marketing about just yourself as possible. Well, all these other maintenance agreements, 
you're going to become the popular guy of that company. Like people are going to want to ask for you again, if they see your name on it, but they're going to be more comfortable that when you show up at that man's agreement and you actually do run into a problem where it looks like, wow, like they were going to need to replace this. This is you know great for me and the company to, you know, we've been waiting on this for five years. Now we have the chance to do it. You are more likely to close them and they're only going to work with you because you've had that history as well. And that could just be a full year around with them. Now they've seen you twice. You know, I like to make jokes that, you know, I just, I don't like quiet time. So I'm always making jokes with my tech. So hopefully they like that. and It's a fun experience for them because if I get along well with them, I love having that same person back because I know they'll shoot me straight. If something does happen and I do have to pay for a bigger, larger repair, fix or install. So yeah, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, all those things kind of add in. And again, it's how little, how many little things can we do to change that perception and to basically close someone to trust us? And it's not just always one thing. So again, I'm going back to our name's kind of a lie. It's not just one thing. It's all these little things are going to add up to basically make sure that person feels comfortable enough to where they're like, okay, yeah, I choose this. I choose to work with you. I trust you enough. And, you know, we're going to kind of go through this with them. So that's kind of where, yes, like your company needs to help you market this. You know, it needs to be your job when you're in every house. You're always talking about this. But your company needs to help you with it because, like you said, it's that long-term game plan. So, again, I know companies that offer, they they pay you commission per each maintenance program you do. Those are things that I think are great. I mean, I incentivize all my guys to do as much as they can. We have referral programs. Like, I'll even pay my own employees to bring someone they know in to build a website with us. So, it's all those things that are kind of good with it. So, like, your company should mainly be, like, emailing or, or messaging your clients to remind them to schedule for you. Like this needs to be easy as much as possible. Um, I can't mention the amount of times I have, but you know what I do. So my joy in life is to go into HVAC and electrical and plumbing websites and just look around at them because I'm a weirdo and that's the industry I'm in is to check those things out. You'll never believe how many times I look at this and it's just hard. And I know how to navigate a website. You know, I'm a millennial. So I was born with, you know, the first version of the flip phone, you know, out of the loom with me. So I understand those things. And, if you're making it difficult, you're making it 10 times harder for anyone who's in a frustrated point. And again, if you just told them that they're going to have to buy a new unit or this repair is not as cheap as they thought it was going to be, they're going to be frustrated. So all these things, just make it easy for them to do as much as possible. Um, and these return maintenance clients, like they are your, refer- your referral partners. So like that's something I tell everybody to do as well is like while you're in their home, if they're so happy, they've already left your review, you know, like, with, don't be shy like maybe leave a few business cards with them if they be open to it be like hey you know i don't know if your neighbors get around often or not if you all have you know different picnics or you can see they look like a lively neighborhood like asking them you know would you mention my name if they ever need anything you know there's a lot of little things you can do where people are sold on people they're not always sold on the company or brand so i know it's kind of weird i'm talking about branding yourself and your company but you're really in the grand scheme branding yourself because at the end of the day how you made them feel is what's going to ultimately make them choose to work with you or not. So the easier you make everything on them, and I'm talking like, yes, you make their maintenance programs, their scheduling, their financing, sending in their warranty info. You make all that as easy as possible, and they're going to love you. And they're never going to, you know, maybe they'll question what you say, but they're still going to end up trusting you and not call anybody else, which is the ultimate goal is that you're the only technician in that home telling them exactly what they need to do because that means you'll be the only technician that is working with them and really and really doing that on a base hey good stuff today Brittany. we've appreciated discussing this with you if people are interested in learning more about uh you know the the ebook that you have or one thing as a whole uh, where's the best place to find you that resource or any more of that information yep the easiest way would actually be just to go to our website so it's one thing marketing.net and that's spelled out. So O N E thing marketing and right at the very top. So let's just say if you were for any reason, a business owner, book a strategy call. There's a button right there. You'll get on my calendar. I'll audit your website, audit your marketing and kind of give you a game plan. But for most of my techs listening, I actually have an ebook that on that homepage as well, right below that button, you can download. And it's just, it says free ebook download. And this is something that kind of gives you a few tick, uh, tips and tricks on getting those reviews kind of ways to kind of get your names in it. But what I would suggest is shoot this off to your office manager, to your boss, to your manager, and have them look over it because a lot of this is going to expand even more when we talk on today. And in my opinion, this is all stuff that they need to be responsible to help you with 
So again, you can be more profitable and successful in your field because you have the team and the company support you in all of your efforts to get there. And more work in the slow season. Exactly. Let's, let's have a small as slow season as possible if we can create a good customer base. Well, we thank you for being on today, Brittany. And as we wrap things up here, I wanted to ask, uh, you know, in your perspective, what is the biggest common mistake that you see uh, trades businesses either in, in, in personnel or in website or in approach? What, you know, what is the biggest thing or things that you see as a common denominator that most companies are making? I would say it would be follow-up. So I have owned a home for eight years. I have replaced almost every single little thing on this house. And I do call a few people in each industry to get a quote from. And you will be surprised by the lack of fault. Like I'll get a quote for a couple thousand bucks and they'll all be pretty much the same. None of them will follow up with me to see who I chose to go with. And that is dollar bills left on the table because I have to choose someone a tree sell. You know, so how do you not know it's going to be you unless you follow up with me to see what my decision was and kind of help me get through that decision making process? You can help convert someone. So I think the lack of follow through is really a devastating aspect on the most on the part of most salespeople, because that is where ultimately we're going to get the business because most people don't say yes in the first try. It takes, what, seven to 21 tries to get someone to, to say yes or give you an answer. So create some type of follow-up system for yourself so you can reach out to everyone you've talked to or make your company do that. So therefore people you've talked to, you can get that business and again, be more profitable and successful in the route to it. I love it. Our guest today has been Brittany Murphy of one thing marketing. We've appreciated you sharing some of your expertise with us and some of your challenges and how we can all get better. Thanks for so much for joining us today on the show, Brittany. Thanks for having me. Hey, that's a wrap for this podcast. We hope that you enjoyed your time uh, on this episode listening to Brittany. I think she brought some good ideas there about how we can all improve. And regardless as to whether you are the owner of a business and you can make these interactions and changes or reviews yourself, or whether you're in the front line and going into homes today and you can apply some of those other strategies to your life, I think there was a balanced approach to how We are perceiving ourselves and being perceived in the market and the authority that comes with that and the importance therein. So make sure that you give uh, some of these resources a check into and that you are paying attention to how you are marketing yourself and your business. We want to leave you now with our weekly challenge. But before we do that, we just want to send out another thank you. Thank you so much uh, for listening to this podcast, for sharing it around. It is the season of Thanksgiving, and we are grateful for you, our listeners. And we are thankful that you have found value in listening to these shows, these episodes. And we are very excited for what 2023 is going to bring. And we hope that you will journey with us. And so now our challenge is, as it is the same every week, to choose to wake up every single morning and waste no day.